Cayman Islands. Money Sense is brought to you by the Chamber Pension Plan. For further information, visit chamberpension.ky. To keep our records up to date and to ensure seamless communication, the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan encourages you to review and update your beneficiaries and contact details, including your email and mailing addresses. You can update your contact information by logging into the member portal or by contacting us at 745-7630 or via email to admin at pensions.ky. Remember to act now to ensure we have the most current information for you. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. Money Sense, bringing an informed financial perspective to the Cayman community. Welcome to Money Sense. My name is Emil Kalinowski, and I'm broadcasting to you live from the studios of Radio K-Man on 89.9 in Grand K-Man and 93.9 in Cayman Brack and Little K-Man. We're going to be talking about January. Yes, it's only six days away from the day of love, Valentine's Day, but that's no reason not to look back at January and see what the top five events are in macroeconomics financial markets were because it's not over what happened in january is going to affect the rest of this year and we're going to go over those five top events and how important they are they may not be top of mind but i'm going to bring them to you right now they come from all around the world event or idea or important uh phenomenon to take note of number one China is battling deflation. How will that affect the rest of the world? We're going to talk about it. The Red Sea destabilizes. What does geopolitical intrigue and foreign affairs in the Red Sea have to do with the world economy, inflation and such? We'll talk about it. That's number two. Number three, uranium, the price of uranium. What does the price of uranium and what took place in January tell us about the new era of government intervention government involvement in the economy in the years and decades ahead tell us number five there is a low-level military quasi-military confrontation taking place in the united states between the state of texas and the federal government what does that symbolize this year a year in which a record number of elections are taking place around the world. What might that mean? And the last, fifth idea, a top story from January, Bitcoin. Bitcoin became more widely available to regular individuals as an investment alternative. What does that... What does, that, what does that relate to in past history, moments in time when a new monetary medium becomes widely available? We'll talk about all of that again. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Emil Kalinowski. You're listening to Money Sense. We're going over the top five events in January, and we're going to start out with China battling deflation. What is deflation? What's the opposite of inflation? Consumer prices increasing is what we think of when we think of inflation. But to be more specific, to be pedantic, to be... A little bit too obsessed with the exact meaning of inflation we're talking about the availability of money if there's a lot of money available too much too much available money well then the the value of things seems to rise because the value of that money is is losing value money becomes too ubiquitous when the opposite condition takes place there's not enough money available that's also very bad news the most famous example being the great depression banks were wiped out money literally disappeared there was less money available economic activity slowed down to to very terribly slow levels that happened during the long depression as well now in china they are battling deflation and in january they reported a third consecutive month of falling inflation in consumer prices that sounds like a good thing and it surely would be no problem except that it's symbolic of deeper troubles ladies and gentlemen so in january they reported on january 12th that 
They are now experiencing the longest decline since 2009 of consumer prices falling. That particular month, it was a 0.3% decrease in December that they were reporting. It was the third straight month of decline. But guess what happened this morning, ladies and gentlemen? China reported a fourth consecutive monthly decline, 0.8% year-over-year decrease in consumer prices. Again, this sounds wonderful, except if you think of the context of what's happening in China. In January, the Chinese also reported that their population shrank. Okay, smaller population by default means less economic activity. There are fewer people to consume goods less economic activity, less economic growth. What else did they report in January? They reported that their most important economic sector, the property sector, suffered greatly in December. They reported declines in all sort of different metrics, such as new starts of, and floor space and home sales by value and floor space and such going on and on and on, completions of floor space. Uh, the average home price in 70 Chinese cities, all of these were negatives. Now, you have fewer people. You have the most important asset, the a almost a bank-like asset where your value, let's, in China, the banking system is heavily financially repressed. People don't be, are not able to earn as much as they need to according to market rates, so they invest and put their money in property, that property is now losing value. It would be the same as if you were putting your money into the bank and it was losing value. Terrible, terrible. How would that affect you when it comes to consumption? How would it affect you in terms of participating in the economy? They reported GDP as well in January. They reported the official number is 5.2% growth, but ladies and gentlemen, we know that that is not true. There's a number of different opinions out there as to what the real GDP number is. Uh, one company, Rhodium Group, a consultancy, said it was only 1.5% growth. Another company, Fathom Consulting, said 7.2%. The point is GDP is not growing as quickly as was previously the case. The inflation numbers, whether it's consumer prices or something called the GDP deflator, is performing very poorly relative to historical trends, meaning there's less money available in China. How might that affect everyone else? It may affect everyone because the government will get involved to try to relieve the pressure because the government there is t and, the, and the society is terribly indebted. And when inflation is going into reverse, the real cost of debt is rising. Meaning, if you have to repay your debts in inflated currency, well, then that cost of debt is actually less than it would be had the currency not it lost value had it not been inflated now consider the opposite case what if deflation is taking place if deflation is taking place ladies and gentlemen then the currency is gaining value meaning you have to repay your debts with higher valued currency this is called a debt deflation this is something that is a terrible burden on the economy and governments worldwide step in to try to relieve the pressure. One way they try to do that is by stepping into the financial markets. In January, China announced that they're going to prevent short selling in their stock market because the stock market in China was falling terribly. Terrible losses, continuous losses. How have they done? Not too great, ladies and gentlemen. The losses continue. Recently, though, in the last couple of days, there has been a turnaround because the government is doubling down. Just today, the Shanghai Composite jumped 1.3%, which is not too bad if you look at it over the last three days. But if you take a look at it over the last three one year, it's a terrible fall. And Hong Kong is similarly losing value in an unrelenting fashion. All of these signs 
point to trouble, big trouble in little China. Their economy is suffering. It's ostensibly the second world, big, the world's second biggest economy. One of the ways they can relieve these pressures with not enough people consuming, economic activity slowing, too much debt, is to devalue their currency. That's something that may happen during the rest of this year. And should that happen, ladies and gentlemen, it will have international implications as other countries react to China devalue their, devaluing their currency and perhaps trying to sell their goods for cheaper. That would be no problem in an era of expanding globalization, but that's not in an era where we are right now, which is which what brings us to the second point, the Red Sea. That is a perfect example, ladies and gentlemen, of deglobalization taking place. Now we're coming up to the commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to take a little break. And when we come back, I'm going to try to run through the last four top events that took place in January, how they're going to affect the rest of the year. When we come back, we'll talk immediately about the Red Sea, how it affects trade. Then we're going to talk, to, look to uranium prices and how they're symbolic of government getting involved in the wider economy. We'll talk about the elections taking place worldwide this year, and we'll use the example in Texas and America fighting over the border, and then Bitcoin as a final example of top stories in January. I'll see you in a minute. To keep our records up to date and to ensure seamless communication, the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan encourages you to review and update your beneficiaries and contact details, including your email and mailing addresses. You can update your contact information by logging into the member portal or by contacting us at 745-7630 or via email to admin at pensions.ky. Remember to act now to ensure we have the most current information for you. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. This is Money Sense, bringing an informed financial perspective to the Cayman community. Brought to you by the CFA Society Cayman Islands. And now, more Money Sense. Welcome back to the Money Sense. My name is Emil Kalinowski. We're going over the top five macroeconomic stories that will affect financial markets for the rest of the year that took place in January. Now, because I love talking about all the little nuances and details and little wrinkles and crinkles of every new story, I spent the entire 15 minutes, first half of the show, going over just one item. Terrible. I'm not a professional. If I was a professional, I would have fit two and a half stories in the first half of the segment. So ladies and gentlemen, forgive me, I'm going to be a little bit briefer with these last four stories and how they're going to affect the rest of the year. We're turning to the Red Sea. In January, it started out with Ethiopia. Ethiopia recognizing Somalia land, which you may wonder, where is that? Well, if you guessed Somalia, that's correct. It's a breakaway republic. Or <laughs> republic. It's a breakaway region of Somalia. They have another breakaway region there called Puntland. The point being is Ethiopia at the beginning of the year said, we recognize you, Somali land, because we want to have our ports on the Red Sea. We think that's very important to our economy. Guess who else thinks it's very important to have ports on the Red Sea and access to the Red Sea? pretty much the rest of the world. 20% of global trade passes through the Red Sea. Now, at one end of the Red Sea, the north end, there seems to be a intense war taking place between Israel and Hamas. At the other end, the Houthis, a Yemeni ethnic group who is trying to overthrow the established government in Yemen and is backed by Iran, began attacking ships passing through the Red Sea. Now, why does this concern us besides humanitarian reasons? Because 20% of global economic trade passes through the Red Sea. The United States and the United Kingdom attacked the Houthis. And I suppose this is no place to wonder why the United States and the United Kingdom attacked these people if they themselves were not attacked. Nonetheless, they did it. They did it with the support of Canada, the Netherlands, 
Australia, and one other country whose name escapes me, ladies and gentlemen, forgive me. But they did it with their support and logistical support. Oh, Australia, Bahrain, Canada, and the Netherlands. So they retaliated for these attacks on trade. The Houthis didn't think too much of it and kept, kept attacking ships passing through the Red Sea. How is this going to affect us and the wider global economy? Well, ladies and gentlemen, shipping companies are deciding to go around the Red Sea. They're deciding to go around the Horn of Africa. That adds 5,000 miles. That adds costs. Whatever goods, whatever energy was being shipped through the Red Sea will now become more expensive, as if we didn't need more expensive goods coming into Europe and North America and the Caribbean. So you can expect destabilization in the Red Sea to continue to reverberate across the world global economy through supply chains being more fragile, more expensive. The third idea, the third topic, the third most important news that took place in January is that uranium prices hit an all-time high. Now, I don't know how many of you are trading uranium. I'm assuming very little. And those of you that are trading uranium, you're probably going to get a visit from the security services as you're not allowed to trade nuclear-grade plutonium on Seven Mile Beach or anywhere else in the Cayman Islands, I'm assuming. Anyhow, uranium, it hit an all-time high in January. Why? Because governments are getting involved in the energy market and the wider commodities markets, ladies and gentlemen. The Ukraine-Russia war has put at risk uranium exports. Why? Because Russia exports a tremendous amount of uranium or makes available amount of it. Kazakhstan makes a lot of, of a, a lot of it available. Grains from the Ukraine, wheat from Ukraine is not reaching global markets as readily. The confrontation between the United States, Team West and China in the in just in general is putting the metals industry at risk because I would say 80% of metal is refined in China. If it's being refined in China and Chinese are then turning around and delaying exports of iron ore to Australia because of disputes, which they did in January. They delayed it. Now, it wasn't public or it wasn't in your face. It just all of a sudden, oh, you know, your documents are not in order, dear company, therefore you're not going to be getting the shipment, whereas normally they would be getting the shipment. They also announced re, uh, restrictions on graphite exports. All of this, all of these commodities are at risk because of a deglobalization, because of confrontation taking place between great powers, Europe, Japan, the United States, Russia, China. Each of them have their strengths. And uranium simply is one of our symbolic, symbolic, uh, mile markers, flagstone, not a flagstone, it's a mile marker that identifies we're on this path away from globalization, away from cooperation, towards confrontation, towards escalating prices, towards governments getting involved in businesses they previously were not. The United Kingdom in January announced the their intent for the biggest expansion of nuclear power in 70 years. The French said they were going to be extending the lives of their nuclear power plants, including the ones operating in the United Kingdom, that they would be investing billions of dollars. Now, where are they going to be getting this uranium from, ladies and gentlemen? The United States announced that they don't have enough stockpiles of a certain kind of uranium, a hay H-A-L-E-U. I don't even know what it stands for. High assay, low enriched uranium. There's not enough of it. Where does it come from? Russia. What do they need it for? They need it for small modular reactors. And the government is guaranteeing prices for this uranium. This is taking place all over the space. And that's why uranium hit $106 a pound in early January, mid-January, and remains there to this day. This is an example of governments stepping in into that particular market like they're stepping into other markets, commodity markets. We should expect 
the same to take place in other markets. For example, the European Union has guaranteed subsidies to a Swedish uh, uh, lithium-ion battery maker, Northvolt, in order for that company not to leave Europe and relocate to the United States. They are going to guarantee funding to v develop a battery operating plant in Europe. That is just a single example. Uranium prices at all-time highs, another example of governments getting involved in the economic sector at a rate they haven't before, and they will do so more in the years ahead. The f one, two, let's see, one, two, three, fourth, fourth most important event that took place in January is that the state this is symbolic another symbol just like the uranium is a symbol of government intervention in the economy the texas confrontation in the united states is a symbol of destabilization stress in democracies elections government stress coming up in the year ahead the new story is such texas said we do not like all of these illegal immigrants coming into our state we're going to put up a fence. The federal government says, you're not allowed to put up a fence. That's our job. The state of Texas said, we don't believe you. We're going to the Supreme Court. What do you think, Supreme Court? The Supreme Court of the United States said, well, yeah, the federal government is correct. It is their right or not right. It's their responsibility to do it. So you cannot overrule their, their actions. To which the Texas... The state of Texas said, well, we're not going to listen to you, U.S. Supreme Court, and we're not going to listen to you either, federal government. To which the federal government said, are you kidding me? When was the last time that a state, in a, and then they, they're sending border patrol, they're sending uh, National Guard. Now, other states in the United States have agreed and have supported Texas saying, we're going to send the National Guard to your state and we're going to secure the border. When was the last time that this quasi-military confrontation took place in the United States? I can only think of the 1950s when President Eisenhower sent the 101st Airborne to secure the entrance of nine black students into southern schools. Maybe it wasn't nine, maybe it was eight, maybe it was seven, but it was a small number. So, and then before that, this, you know, it's very rare, Civil War type stuff. What is this symbolic of, ladies and gentlemen? It's symbolic of the tension, the intense tension, the loss of faith in democracy, the fact that this year there are a record number of elections. Never before in human history have there been this many elections taking place at the same time time around half the between 40 and 50 percent of the people and of the global economy is going to vote this year yes that's true north korea is also on that list and you may be saying emil you're padding the stats by including north korea and venezuela in your list and that is correct yes i by including those two 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 countries elections this year i'm making it i'm being a little bit dramatic as the greatest count ever but the point is this, ladies and gentlemen, their economies have been stagnant for many years. There are protests taking place in Europe with farmers all, or, all over Europe. In the United States, there are states telling the Supreme Court to go stuff themselves and the federal government. This is all symbolic of a an economy, a depression that's in, been in place for 15 years. And we can expect radicals, populists, outsiders, very tan people in the case of the United States, very tan people, coming near power or into power. And the people are looking for radical changes. You can expect radical events to be taking place this year. And that will definitely affect financial markets, meaning don't expect to be looking at, well, what is the value of this company? What is the value of that asset? Expect non-economic factors to be affecting the prices of things such as uranium or perhaps Bitcoin. Ladies and gentlemen, this month, last month in January, the fifth most important event that took place was that the United States allowed 
uh, individuals to buy Bitcoin via ETFs, exchange traded funds. If you have a stock market account, you can buy Apple very easily and you can buy an ETF like the SPY or the GLD, the S&P 500 or gold. Before buying Bitcoin required a degree in advanced mathematics and or nuclear propulsion, underwater swimming, bubble making, piano playing. You needed to be a genius of some sort to buy Bitcoin. Now it is very easy to do so. Why is this important? This is a brand new currency. This does not occur regularly, ladies and gentlemen. A brand new currency is released to the wide, wider public. When does when do radical changes take place in currencies? Well, they take place during radical moments in socio and economic geopolitical history. At least over the last 200 years, that's been the case. And here it is again. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm running out of time, but it has been a sincere pleasure. Again, the top five events in January that will affect the rest of the year, China battling deflation, the Red Sea destabilizing, affecting global trade and the cost of goods. Uranium prices hit an all-time high, meaning symbolizing government's involvement, increasing involvement in the economy. The United States and Texas are arguing with each other, symbolic of the distress taking place in a number of elections that we'll see this year. And a new monetary format has become widely available to the public. We'll see what happens in February. Take care. Money Sense is brought to you by the Chamber Pension Plan. For further information, visit chamberpension.ky. To keep our records up to date and to ensure seamless communication, the Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan encourages you to review and update your beneficiaries and contact details, including your email and mailing addresses. You can update your contact information by logging into the member portal or by contacting us at 745-7630 or via email to admin at pensions.ky. Remember to act now to ensure we have the most current information for you. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you.